In the current times, we can assume with a fair amount of certainty that digital enablement coupled with rising health consumerism will challenge the existing healthcare business model. In a survey conducted by EY of 1000 respondents, more than 70% actually confirmed the usage of Google among the top three sources to capture information about their healthcare needs. The same survey also confirmed that more than 70% of the respondents were going online for booking consultation services, more than 50% were buying diagnostic services online and more than 35% were buying pharmacy services online. While the demand and consumption patterns are shifting, the supply side of healthcare continues to be constrained in terms of doctor availability. The doctor penetration of in the country is still at 0.9 per lakh population, which is lower than the WHO norm, and the availability to specialist clinicians is further constraints. Coupled with the supply side constraints, the availability of digitized and electronic patient health records in the country is next to none, and those that are available in a limited form are also not interoperable, which further limits the access to quality healthcare. Ayushman Bharat Digital Mission is a response to these debilitating challenges in the country. It is an initiative to provide a technological backbone in the form of an integrated digital infrastructure to the Indian healthcare system. The program envisages to provide for the patients a availability of interoperable electronic health records which captures information from multiple sources of healthcare consumption such as hospitals, doctor clinics, labs, as well as pharmacies. Access to quality treatment in the form of a single platform, which increases searchability of healthcare professionals and healthcare providers, and also allows for availing services in the form of online consults, online booking of lab tests, as well as online pharmacy purchases. And third, adoption of tech-enabled, predictive modeling, risk profiling, and trend analysis of anonymized patient data to guide targeted policy decisions and preventive measures in the long term in the country. In addition to benefiting patients, the program also envisages to benefit hospitals, healthcare professionals and pharmacies by improving the scheduling and management of OP and IP services, improving claims and reimbursement cycles, as well as providing a standardized drug registry. While the country witnessed significant fill-up in teleconsultation volumes during the peak of COVID, the current daily teleconsultation loads is estimated to be merely one-tenth of what it used to be during the peak COVID times. The penetration of tele teleconsult volumes is a mere 0.5% share of the total OPD consults which happen in the country. Like several other countries with the relaxation of norms post-COVID, as well as with the significant drop in the number of COVID cases, patients are now comfortable to go back to the hospitals as well as to the doctor clinics for their consultation services. While there exists potential for 25 to 30% of OPD consults to be virtualized and be conducted in the form of teleconsults, the transition is expected to be slow going forward. Expansion of offerings to also include online pharmacy services, as well as home collections for lab tests are the adjacencies which teleconsult players are exploiting to not only expand their user base, but also to ensure retention and stability of the teleconsult business. This is especially true for chronic disease patients who need to repeatedly go back to their doctors for updating their prescriptions for lab as well as pharmacy needs. The availability of interoperable and integrated platform, which is envisaged through the ABDM platform, may provide the much needed fillip which is required to grow the teleconsult volumes in the country. In addition, the launch of standards, which can provide accreditation of teleconsultation providers, can add the much needed reliability as well as acceptance can be driven amongst patients through this route. Insurance can also play a role provided going forward OPD services are brought under the net of retail insurance in the country. The field of diagnostics, whether laboratory or radiology, is rapidly being disrupted by the adoption of AI. It is a well-established fact 
that the availability of qualified human resource for diagnostic services, whether in complex laboratory departments such as histopathology and hematology, as well as in the case of radiology, is scarce, which impacts the access to quality diagnostic services in the country. Not only is access to human resource for diagnostic care constrained, there is also a constraint in terms of financial capital available for investment, especially in high-end diagnostic equipments such as CT and MRI. The CT penetration in India is a mere 5 per million population compared to 40 in the case of high-income countries and 13 in the case of upper-middle-income countries. AI is emerging as an effective tool to bridge some of these gaps in resource constraints with respect to diagnostic services. There are health tech companies today who have developed AIs to conduct diagnosis and screening in complex disease areas such as breast cancer and cervical cancer. There are also AI solutions which can read large number of X-ray reports and detect abnormalities which can narrow down to a set of patient pool who are at high risk of lung cancer. This can help screen down from a very large number of population a small subset of targeted patient pool who can then be sent for chest-related CT and confirmatory oncology tests. This helps reduce the strain on the diagnostic resources as well as improves the speed of detection. Today AI is being seen as a viable option and there is a lot of interest among government, private healthcare providers and private diagnostic chains to drive adoption of AI in diagnostic services.